Good morning, everybody. I'm delighted to be here this morning with you, and I wish you all a very successful event. What I'd like to do today is to discuss with you the critical role that property has in winning foreign direct investment. So over the next 20 minutes or so, what I'd like to do is to talk to you about the impact of foreign direct investment in Ireland, IDA's new strategy winning FDI 2015-2019, our property investment program, which is a specific focus on regional locations around the country, uh, the key impact of uh, construction projects, and many of our clients are involved in them, and talk to you a little bit about that. And what's most important is the requirements of foreign direct investment. So for those of you who don't, don't know IDA, what I'll just briefly go over with you is the role of IDA, our mission and our vision. Um, IDA partners with multinational companies to win and develop foreign direct investment with the whole idea of generating employment and economic benefit for the people of Ireland. Our ultimate vision is to be the best investment and development agency in the world. So from a perspective of business, 2015 was a record year for IDA for winning foreign direct investment. Uh, we uh, saw for the first time ever a 7% increase in first time investments. These are sometimes the more challenging investments because there is no presence in Ireland by the company and we're competing with many global locations to win these investments. Our employment in FDI companies in 2015 increased to 187,000 people. Uh, the knock-on effect of that is almost one in every five jobs in the private sector are supporting FDI. So it is critical to the success of Ireland and its economy. Just to give you a flavour for some of the investments that were won in 2015, uh, I think they range from all the sectors uh, that we cover, uh, and indeed many of the locations uh, and regions around the country were uh, winners as well in that regard. So just from one or two of them here on my list, there's Apple, which if many of you remember, Tim Cook was in Ireland last year and announced 2,000 jobs for Cork. Um, Airbnb, which is a very familiar name to many of you, expanded its, ac its activities in Dublin, creating 200 additional jobs. We had an interesting project for sh from Shopify, um, which is locating in Galway, and it's focused on uh, 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 the online sector. And again, that's looking at 150 jobs, but many of the people in those jobs are going to be home working. So that's a new kind of a business model that we are seeing increasingly with our, our clients. Uber is after establishing a center of excellence and its EMA headquarters in Limerick, and uh, that will create about 300 jobs in the city center, along with uh, Bluefin, which has established an operation on the tech side in Waterford, and that's creating about 40 jobs. And that activity continues right through into 2016, and this year alone, again, we have seen quite a range of winning businesses uh, coming to Ireland and again into a number of locations. I don't plan to go through uh, the wide list that's here because I think it's fairly self-explanatory, but some of the particular uh, uh, highlights is Shire uh, Pharmaceuticals that's investing 400 million in its biologics facility in Meath, and that will have a significant impact as it uh, goes through planning and constructs its facility. First Data is going to establish an R&D facility in Nina in County Tipperary. Many of you may be familiar with First Data because it has a financial services operation uh, here in Dublin. Uh, Wayfair online consumer company is expanding its activities in Galway and has just leased a 30,000 square foot facility in Galway city centre. Um, Amazon expanding with 500 new hires over the next two years. Again, heavy demand on engineering um, uh, expertise, but again, uh, a terrific um, win for, for Dublin. Um, and I can keep going with uh, the arrival of Ralph Lauren, which is in the luxury goods area, and we have some other companies in that, that as well, um, and that's creating about 50 jobs in Dublin. So, very good year to date for IDA and for Ireland in winning more foreign direct investment. And these companies are locating with other companies that are well-established and operating in Ireland. 
while I'm talking about a relative number of new name projects, we have a lot of business that is here over many, many years. And that's the significance of these companies that are in Ireland. These are our reference sellers. These are the companies that we have to be sure are happy in their working environment here so that we can get further business, not just from them, but for other companies that see how these companies are operating. And a company like Lieber, that's a German company from a uh, family-owned company based in Killarney, constantly constructing, constantly enhancing its facilities down there. And it's, it's involved in the manufacture of cranes. It's in Ireland since 1958 and employs several hundred people. Um, another example would be Alps, Japanese company in Mill Street in County Cork, in a similar vein, employing about 300 people and in Ireland for, since 1988. And I can go through a wider list as well, but uh, I think it's all pretty clear and many of the names are familiar to you. Um, Tom earlier alluded to the impact of foreign direct investment, and I think that it's pretty clear um, that you can see we have over 187,000 people employed um, in Ireland and uh, uh, over 130 billion in exports. That's 67% of all of our national exports come from uh, the FDI base of companies here. Uh, they spend one and a half billion per annum on R&D and uh, also generate about five billion per annum in payroll around, around the country. Corporation tax rate is quite high as well, uh, where they generate 65% of corporation tax, which is uh, 3.1 billion uh, in tax last year. Our companies are exporting right over the globe and uh, particularly so to Europe. The nationalities of companies that come to Ireland are predominantly US. So the US market is critical to us, but so also is Europe. And you can see there that the, the main companies that we have from countries that we're focused on in Europe and where we tend to win the most business is from the UK, Germany, and uh, uh, also um, uh, from, can't read it from here, so apologies. Um, uh, so, but overall we have very, very strong um, FDI uh, base from right across the globe and impacting on many sectors. So why do they come to Ireland? There's a range of reasons why companies come to Ireland, but one of the most important things is the talent pool of people, the availability of good quality, well-educated people in Ireland, and the access to a base of 500 million across the EU. As you know, we've opened our borders, and that has been particularly useful for us in attracting overseas companies to Ireland. You'll be very familiar with the multilingual client base that our clients have. So the ability to attract and retain them here in Ireland is key. Um, also talking about the track record, which I've, uh, you've already uh, heard about, the ease of doing business. Ireland is a place that's perceived to be easy to do business. Our government is very supportive, and they are always open and available and listening to hear what the needs of FDI are. So I won't go through each of those, but suffice to say that each and every one of them are very important. And critically important is the role of property um, and the whole area of infrastructure. Um, and I will be going into that in more detail in the presentation. But I would like to highlight that in, in tandem with all these areas of focus uh, for us, uh, and they are key, one of the key requirements as well for us when we're competing is to be competitive. And the National Competitiveness Council this year highlighted two, uh, uh, the two or three of the main issues for them as they see going forward. And they particularly highlighted the area of residential accommodation and the cost of it escalating, and also in the area of office rents, particularly in Dublin. So I think that they're the kind of things that we need to be acutely aware of when we're competing for overseas business. Um, what I've drawn here is just to highlight the, the requirements of foreign direct investment. Um, and, uh, you know, we're dealing with them every day, and many have very different requirements, but I've tried to capture that in these four areas. The first that I, I will highlight is the area of buildings. Our clients are looking for, for buildings, be they manufacturing or office. They often want to lease them or to buy them. They look for, to ensure that there is a sustainable supply and a choice when they're coming to look at buildings of which to locate in. They obviously want very flexible terms, and in the main, they want to be in key locations. Similarly, when it comes to land, it's the same thing. They like a choice of sites. Some are utility, utility intensive. Others are, are sites that are on business parks that have less of a utility requirement. 
um, they are looking for them at a good price and uh, they are always willing to, to look at other locations around the world, particularly for heavy utility sites because the capital investment, the projects that are usually associated with them in the line of pharmaceuticals, data center activity is huge. They're investing millions in establishing these operations. So the, the whole idea of heavy utility strategic sites is key. Uh, the third area, of course, then, is the infrastructure and ensuring, as the minister alluded to with housing, that the roads um, and that access is good. They're also very, very conscious uh, of the need for broadband and fibre, as well as the usual requirements of water, uh, electricity and gas, to ensure that they can get their projects up and running and have the capability to expand those activities as well. The final area, of course, is housing. And we've talked about this already this morning with the minister alluding to the plans that are ahead, which are very welcome. But indeed, in the whole area of housing, our clients need to be able to have homes for their employees, and they need to be reasonably priced. Some are long-term homes, so maybe people are interested in purchasing, but others are also interested in renting. And increasingly, we're seeing that our clients are interested in accommodation that is closer to public sector transport, because many of the employees today aren't driving. So that's one of the phenomena of uh, a more modern day activity. Our business parks that we have around the country tend to have quite a lot of space to allow for people to access through cars rather than public transport. But uh, it is the mix that we see happening. I mentioned to you already that we have a, a, an IDA strategy, and that strategy is very, very uh, ambitious uh, for the next five years. And we've outlined some very key employment targets, um, and we want to win 80,000 new jobs over the next five years up to the end of 2019 and bring 900 additional investments to Ireland, which um, will bring us hopefully to uh, 209,000 people being employed by the end of 2019 in IDA-supported companies. I've highlighted there some of the other um, uh, targets that we have around R&D and expanding our own portfolio of companies. The kind of areas that we're focused on in our new strategy are areas that you may be familiar with. Uh, they're in the area of manufacturing, services, and R&D, and I, and in uh, uh, the, the sectors of pharma, med, med tech, technology, financial services, engineering, and food. Those sectors are traditional sectors to us, but many of them have evolving business models, and there's a lot of change and adapting taking place within those companies, and we have to be able to respond to those as well. Um, the whole area of convergence is new to us, and I know that there's a presentation on this morning on the whole area of financial services and technology. So fintech is a brand new sector that is going to be uh, attracting a lot more companies, uh, we hope, to Ireland as well. Um, so I mentioned to you that we have a very strong uh, uh, strategy. Our strategy is very heavily focused on winning investments into regional locations around the country. And we've set ourselves a target of increasing um, investments into each regional location around the country outside of Dublin by 30 to 40%. And what we'd like to do is maintain the momentum, obviously, um, and the success of Dublin as well. These, tar these targets that we have are for the first time ever have been publicly um, launched uh, last year. And in tandem with that, um, we have been given 150 million by government in which to invest in property around the country. Um, we're doing that and we're very actively working in the action plan for jobs that the minister alluded to as well. So they're key components of our regional strategy, the whole area of property solutions for our clients. Just to give you a flavor of the kind of things that we're doing with this uh, investment, um, we have a number of buildings that we are constructing around the company, both office and manufacturing facilities. The majority of them are on our business parks. We last year completed one in uh, Waterford and in Athlone. I'm happy to say that the building in Waterford has been acquired um, and we've sold that on to a company that's also increasing employment in Waterford by 200 people. So it is a key component in attracting investment to Ireland. We have another of other locations as well around the country that you can see. Some we're constructing um, in, in Sligo and in um, uh, Sligo, Castle Bar, and we're about to construct a manufacturing facility in Tralee. And that, that, those buildings will all be LEED certified buildings as well. 
So a lot happening in that perspective with the whole focus of winning clients uh, to the regions. I mentioned strategic sites earlier, and they're a key component of uh, a winning capital intensive projects. We have over 1,100 acres of land that has been uh, set aside for strategic sites. So with the hope of winning technology companies, pharmaceutical companies, and many other types of companies that I, I, will, I will go through in further detail with you. And we've had a lot of success as well. West Pharma is just, is just increasing, uh, are just constructing its facility in Waterford. Uh, Dlanbia is also in Bellevue and Waterford where they are manufacturing, uh, constructing a new manufacturing facility as well. Um, Gilead on the pharma side down in Cork has a very large facility in place on one of our sites there, as has Centacore in Ringoskiddy in County Cork. These um, type of strategic site uh, capital intensive projects have the capability to create huge employment. They're usually significant employers and very sustainable because of the capital investment that they, they bring to each region and each economy. Here is a picture of our sites, and I'm not going to spend any, any time on them, but just to, to let you know where they are around the country. Um, as I said earlier, we're, we're developing sites and buildings around the country, but our clients are also doing a huge amount and working very, very closely with the construction industry. Um, and here's an example of activity that's taking place around the country with Regeneron, um, 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 investing 650 million in the former Dell facility in Limerick, and which will create up to 500 jobs. Uh, BMS, as everyone knows, is one of the largest uh, investments in construction in the country in the last number of years, again in the pharmaceutical and biologic sector. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, OCO is, uh, after acquiring our building in Cork, are in Waterford, and they will be um, getting up and running very soon. Um, Neil just acquired the um, former J&J &J facility in Tipperary, and they're doing a significant amount of work around that as well ultimately uh, costing them 89 million and creating over 300 jobs. So business services is the same. We have a lot of activity going on around the country. First day at 300 million investment and a, and a, a refurbishment of a building there. Primerica is moving to a 300 per, a to person campus uh, operation in Letterkenny. It's a significant investment by them. They're also moving uh, uh, their 900 staff into one location in, um, in Letterkenny. Wafer, as I mentioned already, and Teleflex is constructing a facility which will be complete on our business park in Athlone. The data center activity is very, very strong at the moment. As many of you know, Apple is going through a planning process in Athenry, along with a significant investment um, uh, by Facebook in Clonny and County Meath. CIF has commented recently about the increase uh, in 2015 in employment. And you can see from the, this, the, the figures that they have uh, provided to, to me, which they received from the CSO, that there's a significant increase in jobs in the first quarter of 2015, showing an increase of 9,500 jobs in the construction sector. Uh, and uh, also commenting on the fact that there is an added increase in the construction centre of about 1,000 jobs per month uh, uh, since the end of 2014. And foreign direct investment is a key component of all of that, and delighted to see that, that that's happening. A um, lot happening in the Dublin property market that I'm not going to enter a huge amount of detail on, but you can see that there's quite a diverse requirements and demands in Dublin from our clients, from very large um, opportunities in the area of uh, large-scale buildings right through to small 5,000 to 2,000 square foot uh, facilities, but they really at the moment, many of them are looking for short-term leases in order them for to, them to gauge their exact growth requirements. Um, and that, that's a specific requirement. Many of them want to be around the central business district, but increasingly are moving to locations outside of the central district business district. For example, um, Workday, um, which is uh, just outside the city centre, and also um, companies like Oracle, which are in, is in East Point. Um, I'm conscious of time now, so I've been given the, the, the warning, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. But it's very important for me to say that uh, it's really important that we may maintain competitiveness around office uh, solutions and indeed around property in general. The availability and choice of buildings around the country is a key component of winning FDI. Manufacturing requires zoned and serviced lands and the, need, the requirement to have serviced office buildings in place 
in the shortest time frame is very important for our clients to be able to have choice. Regional locations, we have 150 million investment, which is particularly important. And suffice to say that our clients absolutely and utterly need to have uh, a, a range of uh, commercial, residential, right infrastructure in order to be able to support their business needs. So property and the whole property construction area is, plays a key role in Ireland. The construction sector is very highly regarded by our clients, and I think that's a very important point to make. And that's evidenced by the level of uh, increase in business and in the activity that's taking place around the country. IDEA has a good, healthy pipeline of projects for the year ahead, with a very strong focus on winning those investments to locations around the country. We're keen to see more residential accommodation in order to meet the needs of our clients. And we are very keen to engage with many of the construction companies around collaborative ideas in the delivery of property solutions nationally. Thank you very much for your time.